exciting new feature of Adobe Illustrator CS6 is the ability to apply gradients to strokes. So we've been working on applying gradients to the fill of an object in this fishbowl project, and now in CS6 we can use the new gradient stroke feature to create this three-dimensional looking gold frame around our fishbowl illustration, which is a very dignified touch for this art. The beauty of using gradient strokes is that you can enlarge the point size whenever you like, so it can be very versatile to work this way. The big difference between gradient fills and gradient strokes is that we won't be using the gradient tool and annotator in this lesson. It doesn't work on strokes in CS6. When you look at the gradient panel in CS6, you'll now see a stroke icon next to the fill icon, just the way we're used to seeing it in the color panel. You can click these icons to move back and forth between the active fill and the active stroke to apply or adjust gradients. Another improvement made to CS6 is that sliders in the panels have been replaced by drop-down menus with preset percentages and degrees, etc. But as always, you can type an exact number into any field. Go ahead and open up your finished fishbowl illustration and the first step will be to change the size of the artboard to make it slightly larger so it accommodates the frame. To do this, go to the toolbar and click on the artboard tool to enter artboard editing mode. Then in the top control bar, click the center reference point on this icon and that will ensure we're increasing the size from the center. Now change the width of the artboard to 10 and a half inches and make the height 8.75 inches. And then hit escape or click any other tool to exit artboard mode. Next, go to the layers panel and select the layer at the top and then go down to the new layer icon and option or alt click to create a new layer above the current layer and name it frame. And then hit OK. We're going to be working on this layer from now on and we'll leave all the other layers locked. Next, we'll add some colors to our swatches panel, perfect for creating the gold frame. So in the swatches panel, click on the swatch libraries icon at the bottom and select the metal library. Then find the swatch group labeled gold 2 and click on the folder icon next to it and that will add this swatch group from the library to your swatches panel. Then close the library panel and we're all set up with colors. Now before we move on you may have noticed that the default CS6 color panel looks slightly different from earlier versions. If you don't see color mixers on the panel just go to the panel options menu and choose show options. Then the color panel will look a lot more familiar. Okay next we'll create a black mat as part of our frame. So grab the rectangle tool, single click anywhere on the artboard, and in the dialog box, create a rectangle that has a width of eight and a half inches and a height of 6.75 inches. With the rectangle selected, go to the top control bar and click on the align icon and select the align to artboard option. Then click the icons to center the rectangle on the artboard. And once your rectangle is in place, in the color panel, change the fill to none, and then click on the stroke here to make it active. And this will also make it active in the gradient panel. First, we're going to go to the stroke panel, and we'll change the stroke weight to 42 points. And then hit tab. And now we're ready to apply our first gradient to this stroke. So open the gradient panel. And in CS6, you'll see a stroke icon, and you can see we already have the stroke active. So click the default black and white gradient thumbnail here to apply it to the stroke. You'll notice that just like with a fill gradient, you can click on the drop down type menu here to choose a linear or radial gradient. For the mat, we're going to keep this at a linear gradient. Just below that, in the stroke options, you can choose from three different gradient behaviors. The first is apply gradient within stroke, which is on by default, and as you can see on our matte stroke, the gradient travels from white to black in the same way that it would if this were a filled shape. 
The next icon is Apply Gradient Along Stroke. And here you can see that the gradient starts in the corner and runs along the stroke from white to gray and all the way around to black. Finally, there's Apply Gradient Across Stroke. And you can see the white to black transition that now runs perpendicular to the stroke. We're going to use all three of these options in this project, but we'll choose the first option for the mat, Apply Gradient Within Stroke, and that's the default. Next, let's change the black stop on the right to Rich Black, which is one of our global swatches that came with this project. So just drag it over the existing black stop, and because it's a global swatch, we can adjust the overall percentage of black with a single slider, which is very handy. And we'll do the same thing with the white stop, just dragging the rich black swatch down to replace it. And then one more time, drag the swatch down to the middle to create a third stop. Now with that middle stop selected, go to the color panel and change its percentage to 70% to make it a dark gray. This will create a gradient that fades from black to gray and back to black. Next, we'll change the angle of the gradient, and to do this, use the drop down menu and select 90 degrees. Now, the gradient starts at the bottom of the mat and has a gray highlight in the middle that fades to black at the top. Now, we'll make another rectangle that creates the appearance of a beveled edge on the mat. Use the shortcut this time for the rectangle tool, and that's M, as in mat, and click once on the artboard. Make this one 7.95 inches wide and 6.2 inches high. And again, use the Align to Artboard icons to center it on the artboard. The old settings from the previous gradient stroke will be applied to this new one. So in the Stroke panel, change the stroke weight to 4 points. Now let's go back to the gradient panel. And for the beveled edge, we'll choose the Apply Gradient Along Stroke option. That's the second option. And we only need two stops for this gradient. We're going to go from light gray to dark gray. So I'll remove the black stop on the left by dragging it away from the slider. Now I'll change the left stop to a really light gray, just changing that in the color panel. Move the stop over a bit. And next, select the right stop and dial its color back a little bit so it's not pure black. Okay, on the artboard, the gradient starts and ends in the lower right corner. To change the starting point, we'll just rotate the rectangle. So hit V to choose the selection tool and hold shift as you rotate it around so it snaps to 45 degree increments. So now we've gone 180 degrees and the gradient starts and ends in the upper left corner now. All right, so we finished the mat and the beveled edge. Next, we'll move on to create the gold frame that borders the mat. For this, make another new rectangle with a width of 10.125 and a height of 8.375 inches. And we'll center it up again like before. And in the stroke panel, type in a stroke weight of 30 points. Then open the gradient panel, and we want to select the third option, Apply Gradient Across Stroke. We're going to change the right color stop to gold. So choose this next to the last swatch from gold to, and just drag it to the right stop. Next, Change your left color swatch to the darkest brown from the swatch group by dragging it down. Okay, this looks good. But let's go ahead and click on the reverse gradient icon, and that way we've just flipped the two color stops. And this will blend in with the stroke that we create next. But it's a good button to play with because it can change the way a gradient stroke looks very quickly. So you can experiment with that later. Finally, on this gradient, we're going to change the location of the yellow color stop to 15%, just dragging the stop. It doesn't have to be exact. And we'll locate the gradient midpoint 
at about 70%. Now we're ready to create the raised center of our frame. So make a new rectangle with a width of 9.375 inches and a height of 7.625 inches. And center it up on the artboard. Give it a stroke weight of 25 points. And back in the gradient panel, our previous gradient colors will already be applied to this stroke. And for this one, we want the same option as before. The third option, apply gradient across stroke. So that's good. And this time, we'll change the type from linear to radial. And this creates the effect you see on the artboard with our darker brownish gold color appearing on both sides of the width of the stroke, fading into the brighter gold at the center of the stroke. So using a radial gradient in this case allows us to create this kind of rounded tubular effect with only two color stops because it travels in and goes back out again just like a circle would. Now we'll add a third stop just to add a bit of highlighting. So move the yellow color stop to the center. It's approximately 50%. And then drag the cream color from the gold swatch group over to the left side of the gradient slider. And now you can adjust the midpoint sliders as you like to decrease the amount of highlight color or increase it if you want and play with the amount of shadow, whatever looks best to you. Okay, let me zoom out a bit. So, we've created a fairly convincing mat and frame around the artwork, all using gradient strokes. And if I flip us back to outline mode, it's kind of amazing to see how much dimension and interest we've added to what is essentially a lot of very simple paths here in Illustrator. So, I hope this lesson has helped with gradient strokes. I find uses for them all the time in my work. This is an illustration of a light rail stop that I did, and I used transparencies in these wires, these strokes up at the top to fade these lines into the distance. And the actual rails under the train have a gradient across stroke applied here. And when I'm working with clients that may not have this feature yet in their version of Illustrator, I just expand the strokes. and you can do this using outline stroke or the expand commands in the object menu and I'll show you quickly on the frame. So when I do this, you can see it does create a lot of extra paths. Illustrator breaks this down into a gradient mesh, which would be crazy to try and edit, but it will at least make your file compatible with earlier versions of Illustrator. So I keep my own editable file and then I save another copy of the file in an earlier version for sending out to people who need that. Now, we didn't get into using the appearance panel with gradient strokes in this lesson, but you can also experiment with that on your own. You can layer up strokes and you can add drop shadows and outer glows to push this frame and the dimensionality of it even farther. Patterns also work on gradient strokes too, so you can throw that in while you're adding multiple strokes in the appearance panel. So enjoy working with gradients on strokes in CS6.